Uh, Lord, we just thank you for today. I thank you. Today's the day you have made. We'll re rejoice and be glad in it. And I thank you, Father, for your presence in this place. I thank you that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Lord, I feel a hunger for your presence in this place, God. And I thank you that you are the daily bread, that you are the sustenance, God, that we can eat of you and never hunger again. And I pray today, Father, that your word would go forth with power, that it would accomplish everything you set it out to do, Father. I ask that you would open the ears of the hearer, open the hearts of, the, of your people to hear your word, Father, and that your word would be sown in good ground, that it would produce a harvest 30, 60, even 100 times more than that which was sown for our good and for your glory. Holy Spirit, continue what you're doing. We give you permission. We yield and surrender our will to yours. Have your way in this place, in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. 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 Yeah, I got my got my Fiji water back today, guys. It really is a good it really is a good day. Here, here, here's the thing. They even asked, what kind of water do you want? They asked me that this morning. I said, just give me the tap water so I don't have to play with the cap, because oftentimes I find myself trying to unscrew the cap, but hey, they they showing off in this place. Amen. Anyways, real quick, guys, speaking of showing off, some of you know, some of you may not know, our pastor Steve is in the house this morning. He had a procedure this week. Listen, we know what he went through. We know how much that song meant to us. Well, there's, it's his breath in our lungs, right? And we sang that song and we believed it. And we saw a miracle in his life. But the restoration process is not over. The full healing that is done in heaven has not fully manifested. There's still a process, right? And so here's the thing. He had surgery this week. Oh, my gosh. And he was supposed to stay in there at least one day, if not two Oh, but he came home, church, the same day. He came home the same day. Won't he do it? Won't he do it, somebody? Amen. Amen. We give him praise for that. We thank you, Pastor. So great to see you in the front row this morning, even on your knees worshiping this morning. Amen. Just showing off in your life. And I'm just so, so thankful for you guys, for you and Pastor Ashley. Just so grateful to be up here. We, we got a, I got a word to give you guys. Let's get into, if you could, put James 1 on the screen, starting in uh, verse 21. We're going to read uh, 21 through 24 real quick. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept. Somebody say accept. Yeah. Humbly accept the word planted. Somebody say planted. Yeah. Planted in who? Yeah. In you, in me which can save you. Oh my goodness. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. <laughs> that's, that, that's, that's a sermon right there. I'm done. That's it. That's it. Do what it says. Four words. It's a whole sermon. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. Can I get ugly right off the jump? Here's the thing, you know, I don't, I don't play around. I, I, don't, I don't care. Here, we get so excited for the word. I can't wait to get in the house to get a word. I need a word. Pastor Steve preaches such a good word. I need to tell my friends all about the word in that church. The word, the word, the word. But we don't do anything with it. We come in here and get entertained. We perform. We clap. We praise. All that's great. But we don't do anything with the word, or very few of us do anything with the word. The enemy is not scared of you guys sitting in this church. He's not scared of you guys listening to what I'm saying. What he's scared of is you guys ever taking what you hear out of this church into a world that needs it. Oh, y'all ain't ready for me this morning. He doesn't care. He knows the word too. He doesn't want the word to be inside of you. He doesn't want the word to become uh, evident in your life. He doesn't care if you sit here every Sunday, as long as it doesn't change your life, as long as you don't become a threat to his agenda. He doesn't care. Be doers of the word. 
What the enemy fears more than anything is your submission to the authority of God and his word because they're inseparable. He fears submission to the authority of God and his word. Doesn't care if you hear it. He cares if you submit to it. Uh, everyone under the sound of my voice, whether you're watching me online, good morning, by the way. Didn't welcome you guys before I got into it. I hope you guys are enjoying the service. Um, and you guys that are in here, wherever you are, or maybe you'll hear this uh, sometime in the future, everyone right now is going to hear the word of the Lord. Amen? Amen. It's not going to be my word. We just read the word of the Lord from the Bible. All of us heard the same thing. Why is it then that all of us can hear the same information, but very few of us will ever do anything with it. What is the problem? What is the problem? So the question becomes, if we're all subject to the same information at the same time, or maybe you, are, you actually read your Bible, right? You don't just listen to the word, but you actually read your word, why is it that some people can apply it, do what it says, though it's not easy, and why do most of us never do anything with it? Why? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you asked. Because what we're getting ready to read, um, Jesus actually breaks this down. And so I'm not going to um, stray too far from the text because I think, obviously, he does it more justice than I can. But I have a few verses, actually about 18 of them, that I want to read real quick. And then I'm going to break it down. Can we do that? I want to get to the bottom of this issue. And I hope by the end of this next two hours that you guys know um, the answer to the problem, all right? Let's, let's go. Hey, listen, listen, the game doesn't start till 6.30. The food isn't ready till 5. Where y'all got to go? Huh? And I see all these jerseys in here. Y'all team ain't playing anyways. Hey! The bad thing is, y'all, most of the jerseys I see, you're in the same conference with my team, and we're all home. <laughs> all right, let's get back to the word. Let's go. I'm going to read Mark 4, starting in verse 2. I'm going to read through verse 20. Amen? Might read a little quickly, but I promise you, I'll slow down, and I'll catch you guys up. This is Jesus. Talk, he says, he taught them many things by parables, and in his teaching said, Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, some multiplying 30, some 60, some 100 times. Then Jesus said, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. When he was alone, the 12 and the others around him asked about the parables. He told them, the secret, everybody say secret. The secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you. My goodness. But to those on the outside, everything is said in parables. So that, quote, they may be ever seeing but never perceiving. And ever hearing but never understanding. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. <laughs> then Jesus said to them, don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? The farmer sows the word. Amen. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Others, like seeds sown on rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Still others, like seeds sown among thorns, hear the word. But the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Last verse. Others, like seeds sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop. Some 30, some 60, some 100 times what 
was sown. Whew, that was a lot. Can we break it down? Listen, the title of this message is The Heart of the Problem. The Heart of the Problem. Here's the thing. Jesus came to do much more than save your soul. He did come to to clean you up, to save you, no doubt about it. We love that part. But Jesus came to bring back the kingdom of God into the earth. He came back to restore what Adam lost in the garden, the dominion, the power, the authority, the, the undivided connection. Earth was never meant to operate apart from heaven. Earth was, was to be subject to the ruling, the, the authority, the culture of heaven. My, my, you, you know, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, right? Jesus was obsessed with the kingdom. If you read your Bible and you have the Bible where his words are in red, if you go to those red words, a majority of them say, and the kingdom is like, and the kingdom is like, and the kingdom is like, and the kingdom is like. He was obsessed with the kingdom of God. And the way that Jesus taught the kingdom of God was through parables. There are many of them. Because he was a master teacher, typically what he did was he would use a natural imagery or natural illustrations to convey a spiritual truth, right? He would use uh, agriculture, animals, whatever was relevant at, in that day. He would use that to try to, to gain spirit, to spiritually teach his listeners. The problem is, is that they heard, but they didn't understand, and Jesus said the kingdom is for the seeker. Meaning, if we're ever going to get the kingdom in our hearts, if we're ever going to experience the kingdom of God in the earth, it's going to take something on our part. Being a seeker is a verb. It implies action on the part of the hearer. Amen? A sower sows the word, and this is what we're going to talk about. But the, the, the problem is, is that we, we want the kingdom, but we don't go after the kingdom. We don't seek the kingdom first, Matthew 6, right? Seek first the kingdom. We can quote it, but do we do it? It's quiet in this place. <laughs> one, other, one other important thing, especially as it pertains to the way I'm going to present this, is that typically, like I said, when Jesus taught in parables, he didn't then give them the practical application of the parable. He wanted them to seek it for themselves. With this particular parable of the seed and the sower, Jesus explained it very well. That's why I said I don't want to stray too far from the text. I'm going to add a little color to it. But I think he did an excellent job breaking down exactly what he meant. And to me, if Jesus took the time to explain this one as opposed to a lot of the other ones, it may be, of, may be possibly a little more important. Can we talk about it this morning? Let's break it down. He says, the farmer sows seed. Hmm. Seed. There's a, the Bible refers to several things as seed. This particular passage is talking about the word of God. A farmer sows. Pastor Steve sows. I right now am sowing seed, the word of God. Jesus said the farmer sows the word. That's what I'm doing right now. Everybody understand that. Very basic, right? The word is being sown. Something to understand about a seed is that the potential for a, 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 a harvest or a crop or fruit is already embedded within the seed. <laughs> the potential for a thing is already in the seed. The potential for an oak tree is already wrapped up in an acorn. The problem is, is that in order to produce a harvest or to get the expected result of the seed, it has to be sown. Not only does it have to be sown, it has to be sown in good ground. The potential for your life is wrapped up in the word of God. His word is seed. Everything that you'll ever need in your life to be all that God's called you to be is wrapped up in his word. It doesn't change. We listen to the word, but do we get the word planted? Is it planted? Or does it go out one ear, in one ear, and out the other? And you guys have what we'll talk about as an emotional experience. But you leave here the same way that you came in. Is the problem the sower? Or is the problem the soil 
that the seed's being sown into. <laughs> the, the Bible says that Jesus explained that the soil is our heart. The soil here is our heart. And I think, uh, early, I think it was this month, if last, whenever it was, for Ignite Service, I talked a little bit about um, the heart. And the translation of heart means uh, the seat of thought or emotion or the inner self, right? So we're not necessarily referring to the organ that's beating in our chest as being the heart. You can think of it that way as far as like getting it down inside of you, but we're really referring to the inner self. And so if the, if the seed is in the word, and the seed needs to be planted in soil, and the soil is our heart. The purpose of soil, I'm talking naturally, if I have any farmers in here, the purpose of soil is to do nothing else but to push forth the, the potential of the seed that's sown in it. It doesn't care what is sown. The job of the soil is to bring forth the, the potential of the seed that was planted in it. Man. Good or bad. It doesn't care what's planted. It's going to produce it. Do you understand what I'm saying? The word goes forth. It needs to be sown in soil. The soil is our heart. So then the heart of the problem is our heart. Let me say that again. The heart of the problem is our heart. The problem is not the sower. It's certainly not the seed. It will produce. The problem is the soil that it's being sown into. That's what I want to focus on this morning. See, soil doesn't care what kind of seed's planted. The only, its only job is to push forth whatever, whatever potential is inside that seed. And so this is kind of, this is, this is what Jesus is saying. It's actually kind of um, disheartening as someone who occasionally gets to preach and I, I have to imagine someone who does it every week, it's equally as disheartening. What he's saying here is that I, Pastor Steve, whoever you listen to, we have a one in four or 25% chance of ever seeing a harvest from the seed that we sow. <laughs> there are four soils. We're gonna find, you're gonna find yourself in one of these four before the end of this message. We're gonna talk about them. Only one of them but does, is there a harvest? Is there fruit? Only one, one in four will ever do anything with the word that they hear. Wow. <laughs> Man. You understand what I'm saying, Pastor Steve? Amen. You, you understand, maybe they don't understand because they don't, they don't know the time that goes into doing this and what we see and what we hope, and we may not ever see it, right? We don't know the impact that we're having. Don't get me wrong. But it's disheartening to know how much we put into this, how much we try to get out of this, how much we try to sow. And we, and we don't see fruit. It doesn't stop us from doing it because we're compelled to preach the gospel. We're compelled. We're not, we're not fruit inspectors. I don't work for the USDA. I'm not saying that, right? I'm not here inspecting fruit. There is someone who is. There is someone like last week who's going to come around to that fig tree looking for fruit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Y'all remember that one more year? You're going to give me one more year to produce. What happens if you don't? What are you going to do? Why doesn't it produce? <laughs> oh, we're going to tie it all together today. Let's get it. We got four types of soil. I want to break this down. First type that Jesus talks about. And again, there's only four of them. They refer to us. They refer to our heart, the seat of thought, emotion, our inner self. The first kind, he, this is in chronological order uh, as it's uh, written in the text. The first one is what we call the path or what he calls the path. This is the compact soil, the hard soil, right? So again, because, because the, the, the audience in that day uh, were, a majority of them were just farmers, right? It was very highly agricultural, right? We didn't have all the technology we have today. That's what they did. So when he's referring to the path, what he's saying is that they're in, in a field, and farmers, you may know, in a field around the outside or even within the field from constant treading on that ground from people, that soil becomes very, very hard, yeah. right? Becomes very compact. I tried to plant grass seed in my yard last year. 
And my yard is not very good, right? It has a lot of um, like crabgrass and weeds and stuff. And there were a few bare spots out in my front yard. And what I would try to do, because I bought the most expensive seed that Home Depot offered, because I wanted, listen, because I wanted to do the minimal amount of work possible for it to grow. Come on, somebody. So what I did was instead of preparing it, the ground, I just kind of brushed the surface off and I just dropped it on top of the ground. Now, I did water it occasionally. But what I found was after two weeks, I could still see that. Y'all, if y'all know grass seed, a lot of times it's blue, right? It was still blue, but there was much less of it than what I had planted. Why? Just what Jesus said. He said, when the sower sows the word on hard ground, when the soil of our heart, Heart is hard. Just how the seed can't penetrate the hard ground, it can't penetrate a hard heart. And what happens when you plant seed on hard soil is that it doesn't get into the soil, it doesn't get planted, and it gets quickly devoured by the birds. Jesus says, Satan, as soon as the word's sown, Satan steals it. The hard heart. This, this refers to someone who um, hears the gospel, hears the good news, hears the word of God, but they don't understand it. They hear every week they're hearing word, they're hearing word, the sower's sowing, it, they're sowing, but it never gets into their inner self. It never makes its way to the place of the seat of their thought life or their emotions. Because the, instead of having a heart of flesh, they have a stony, hard heart. And that, and that seed that is the word of God can't penetrate it. So what happens is they fail to make a connection between what they're reading and how it applies to their life. They may be able to memorize it. I can quote scripture all day. But as long as I quote it and don't apply it, it has no power in my life, very little power in my life. It remains words in a, on a page in a book. It, it doesn't become alive. It doesn't become active. It doesn't become the double-edged sword that, the, that, that it's supposed to do in our life. It doesn't bring the conviction it's supposed to bring. It doesn't bring the truth and the light and the revelation that it's supposed to bring. Why? Because it never gets in the soil. We hear it and we leave here with the same hard heart that we walk in here with. Why? Maybe the, 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 this refer, refers to someone who's kind of um, maybe dismissive, maybe is the right word, of the things of God, right? And it may be through no fault of their own. Maybe, they, they, maybe they're carrying around church hurt or residual hurt from someone who uh, so abused them or mistreated them, and that was the closest representation, representation to God that they ever had. So maybe there's a distrust there, right? They didn't see the character of God being manifest in their life. So they have a, a, a distorted perception of who God is. They have a hard heart. And the word, the seed, has no impact in her life. And it's so frustrating and it's so disheartening to know that there are people who can hear the same thing that I hear, that can read the same words that I read, and they don't have the same outcome in their life. That's the part of a pastor hurts for people, wants just one person for the light bulb to go off and everything change. Amen. But we can't because we have the stony heart. We have the hard heart. We have, our heart is like the ground that's hard around a field. This is someone who's not prepared. Oh my goodness. They're not prepared for a work of grace that leads to salvation. They're not prepared. Their heart's not prepared to receive a seed that can bring them to salvation. That's the hard, compact soil. Second one is the rocky ground. We can call this the crippled soil. This refers to the person who, Jesus said, receives the word with joy immediately. These are the people that get excited when they hear a word from the stage, hear a word from their favorite preacher, wherever they're hearing a word, and it sparks something in them. And on the surface, it appears 
as though the seed has been planted. And the seed has been planted, in fact. The problem is, is that it's been planted in shallow soil. On the surface, it looks all good. There is a plant that, that pops up very quickly. There is evidence of the, the possibility of potential fruit in their life very early on. The problem with this kind of soil is there, because it's shallow, remember what Pastor Steve talked about last week about, taking, about your roots being deep? Because the soil, the soil is shallow, the roots never can take root. They can never grow deep enough to get to the nourishment and the nutrients that that plant truly needs to survive. This is the person who has an emotional response to God's word, but this is a person who knows nothing about repentance. <laughs> yeah, they know nothing about what the cross of Jesus really means. They hear a word that maybe speak just to what they're going through. And it's that one word that just wells up in them so, so strongly. And they start out so strong. But it doesn't take long before we don't see them again. Yeah, we wonder what happened. You started so strong. What happened to your roots? What happened to your plant? They quickly have issues with coming to church. They would come every Sunday, possibly even on Wednesday for a prayer night. And then we just don't see them anymore. We may reach out to them and never hear from them again. And we're left wondering, what happened? Maybe that was one of you guys in the past. Maybe God has healed your heart. Maybe there's people watching me online that used to come to this church. But you don't come back here anymore. You watch from a distance. Jesus said it's like a plant that quickly sprouts up. But when the sun, when the heat of life touches it, it scorches it. It withers and it does not bear fruit. The reason it doesn't bear fruit is because it never took the time to get the roots planted deep into the ground. They went shallow and it can grow shallow for a little while. But there's going to come a point in time in your life where life's going to hit you in such a way that if the roots of your life are not planted deeply, you will not make it. These are people who get offended. Yeah. Hey, that struck a chord. Yeah, these are people who get offended. These are people who, who are comfortable in here, but when someone knows that they're saved and begins to ridicule them for their faith, they fall back. <laughs> these are the people who, on the outside, everything looks strong, everything looks good. But what we don't see that really matters is what's beneath the surface. That seed, yes, it got planted, but the roots didn't take, it, it, it never took the deep roots that it needed to sustain. So what happens is because the roots aren't deep, because they're not down in the well that springs out into life, when something hits them, when they're fighting a battle that they didn't see coming, when the enemy is hounding them, they have nothing on the inside of them to sustain them. They hear a word, but the word is not on the inside of them. It's not what comes out of their mouth when life squeezes them. Because either they don't believe it or they're afraid of what's going to happen if someone sees their new lifestyle. <laughs> Y'all doing all right? I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. <laughs> you can come back up and sing. That was better anyways. <laughs> all right. So we got the hard soil, the compact soil. We got the rocky soil, which is like the crippled soil, right? Third one is the, the thorny soil, which is like the crowded soil. If I'm going to be honest, I'm going to talk about me for a second. The first two, I don't really, maybe at one point in time in my life, I found myself in, right? There was a point in time where I would go to church and what I heard didn't have an impact on my life, right? We can all agree there. There were other times where I started out strong on something. Somebody spoke a word to me that ignited something in me with passion. But then I quickly fell off. And not saying I don't sometimes still find myself in that soil. Can we be honest? This one right here personally has probably been the hardest one for me. This is the crowded soil. This is someone who... Here's the word of God who receives the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But 
They have one foot in their future <laughs> and they have one foot still in their past. And they're straddling the line, right? I haven't fallen all the way back, but I don't have both feet firmly rooted. I have crowded soil. I like the Savior Jesus. I like the get out of hell free Jesus. What we struggle with, church, is the Lord Jesus. He wants to be not Savior, not just Savior. He wants to be Lord of your life. Lord means authority. It means headship. It means he wants to be who you submit everything to. We like to come in here. We love to get people saved. We love to scream it. We love to advertise it for our church, right? We love to put the metrics out there for everyone, see how great we're doing with getting people to Jesus. The problem is, is we never grow into disciples. I, taught, I had a message one other time. It was called fan or follower. You guys remember that one? We have so many fans of Jesus, very few followers, because with authority comes submission. And we don't like to submit to anything. We like to get just enough of what we need to feel good about ourselves so we can go out and live the same life we've always lived and think that God's okay with it. As if, as if when we got saved, we now have a license to sin. It is quiet up in this church. Am I only talking about myself? or Are you, are you guys finding yourself anywhere in this message? I don't know if it's just you're just letting it sink in or if you're already counting down the time till the wings are done. I don't know, but this is someone who, my gosh. Man, listen. Listen, Costco got the best wings. My wife and I found a ba couple bags of wings from Costco. Put those things in the air fryer better than anything I've ever had. Seriously. All right, now I got that out of the way. Am I lying? Those things were good, really good. I think we're about to go back this afternoon. What the, I got to get y'all out here so I can get to Costco. <laughs> Anyways, look, the people, with the, the people with the crowded soil, these are people who claim Christ. They claim Christ, but their life says differently. You understand what I'm saying? We put on a front for people, especially in a church like this, like we have it all together. And we go out and there's friends and family who don't even know that we're saved. <laughs> and when we get around them, it's like we were never saved to begin with. We can't change something that we're just like. You are called to be salt of the earth. Salt seasons and changes the flavor. How can you be this? Jesus said once the salt loses its saltiness, how can it ever be salty again? So we love to claim Jesus, love it. But we don't actually want what comes with it. The seed of the word of God, the word cannot, hear me church, cannot survive in crowded soil. I can't have what Jesus says, though the, the deceitfulness of the world or the deceitfulness of wealth and the wickedness of the world crowds my soil. So I want to claim Jesus but I want to chase after worldly success. <laughs> the deceitfulness of wealth and other things. And so what happens is Jesus said that when this happens, yes, there is good seed in your soil. Don't get it twisted. There is word in there. There is good seed. But the deceitfulness of other things chokes that word, the Bible says. And when it's choked, it cuts off the supply that it needs to sustain. And what happens is the thorns and the weeds, come on somebody, when weeds grow up, it chokes out everything else, all the good stuff. This refers to someone who has too much mixture in their soil. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Does that make sense? I have too much mixture in my soil. I have a, have a lot of, maybe a little bit, hopefully a lot of good seed, but I still have some things in my life that if I don't hear me, church, uproot them. I didn't say cut them down. I said if I don't uproot them, they will grow back. Weeds do not play around. <laughs> it is very hard to get rid of them. And once they're gone, you have to sustain that environment to keep them from coming back. Oh, my God. We have, we have thorny soil, crowded soil, too much of the world mixed in with a little bit of Jesus. 
And what happens is we become unfruitful. It chokes off the ability for us to produce fruit. Because again, the soil, like I said in the beginning, the soil will produce whatever's planted in it. So it will come up with a little bit of wheat, but there will be a lot of tares in it also. Last one, the good soil. The choice soil. This is the kind of heart that every pastor prays that his congregation has. This is the good soil. This is the soil. This is the heart. This is the person whose soil has been, hear me, has been cultivated intentionally to receive a seed that will stay. When I planted that, when I, I shouldn't even say planted, when I dropped that seed in my yard, what I failed to do was first cultivate the soil, to till the soil, to work the soil, like the fig tree. Let me dig around it, right? Let me dig around it. Let me pour a little fertilizer on it. Let me add a little water. Let me tend to my garden. Let me prepare my soil so that what's planted in it can take root and it can stay. This is a person who not only accepts, but applies the word. Oh my gosh. That's the difference between knowledge and wisdom. So many people have knowledge, but very few have wisdom. Wisdom is the application of knowledge. The enemy doesn't care if you have a bunch of knowledge. He doesn't want you having wisdom. Wisdom is practical application where I can draw a connection between the word of God and my life. This is where the true potential of the seed of, of the word of God can take root. It's where I can begin to produce fruit. This is the heart, that the only heart that brings honor to the sower. <laughs> Let me say that again. This is the only heart that brings honor to the sower. This is the only heart that where he will see the fruit of his work. This is someone who takes the word, it goes from their ears, from their mind, and it begins to slowly get planted. It goes from an emotional, temporary response to something that can sustain me through all seasons, whereby I can produce fruit when? In season and out of season. Why? because I've prepared my heart to allow the potential of God's word to manifest. <laughs> this is someone who has a total lifestyle change. To repent means to turn. Doesn't mean I'm sorry. Repentance means I do a complete 180 and I turn everything that is not conducive to my future, that does not propel me into destiny and purpose, I turn from it. That's what the word of God does. It brings conviction. I'm not saying you're not still gonna fight the same battles or the struggles that you used to fight, but there's a strength that's not of your own that you can, that you can tell your flesh to shut up. It can sit down and you can subject it to the word of God. And the anointing on the inside of you grows in such a way that the that the yokes and the bondage that's been wrapped around you for so long is broken yeah. by a word that's been planted in good soil. Yeah. And before you know it, the Bible says, listen, I love to invest. This says you could bring a minimum of 30 fold return. Oh my God. He says some 30, some 60, some even a hundred times more than that which was sown. Oh, how pleasing God would be. Oh, how much different our world would look if we gave even a 30% return on God's investment in us. Yeah. I'm not even talking about a hundredfold return. I'm talking about even a minor 30% return. That's the potential that we all have. The heart of the problem is our soil. It's hearing what I'm saying and not allowing it to take root. This is someone who knows that what the world has to offer doesn't last. In the words of my teenage daughter, it just hits different. 
right? Or it just doesn't hit the same as it used to, right? That stuff that I used to desire, the things I used to seek out, don't bring me the same satisfaction. Come on, somebody. Do I have any witnesses in this place? We know what it's like to have what the world can offer. We know what it's like to live with soil that's mixed. And a lot of us know what it's like to live with no seed on the inside of us. You don't even know the potential that you have. This is someone who knows all about that, but chooses, catch me church, the difference between where you are now and where God wants to take you is a choice. The days of your life ordained before you were ever born It's not up to God to get them into your life. It's up to you guys to bring those days that are written in the book of the Lamb into your life. He's not up there chewing on his fingernails wondering if you're ever going to reach your potential, if you're ever going to go change the world. You have it in you. It's in here. But is this in here? The seed in in this soil takes root. And when the plant reaches maturity... When I say maturity, right? Maturity is a process, right? We don't just spring up to maturity right away, right? There are things locked up under guardians and stewards in the kingdom of God until an appointed time of maturity. When you reach that appointed time of maturity, then God can unleash those things into your life. As long as you're living below your potential, below your calling, you still need baby milk. Come on, somebody. When you still need to be uh, nurtured every single Sunday, right, Pastor? Until you grow into a level of maturity in the faith, in the spirit, God can't give you what he really wants to give you because a good gift out of season will kill you. If you're not prepared, it's not that God doesn't have it locked up for you. It's you are worthy. Don't, don't, don't mistake me for a second. You are worthy by the blood of Jesus. But we celebrate salvation. We don't care to seek the kingdom. We don't care to seek everything else that was in Jesus. The sower sows the word. It's the soil. These are people who are continually fruitful. They produce fruit in season and out of season. Is it always easy? No. It's not always easy. It's not always easy to get in front of people and sell hope. When you're walking through what feels like a hopeless situation. It's not easy. But what I'm here to tell you is that when your roots are planted so firmly, so deeply, you can't help it. You are compelled, the Bible says. You are compelled. The Bible says it's the goodness of God that leads man to repentance. Once you repent, once you get a heart that is open to a work of salvation and grace in your life, when you get a taste of the kingdom, it's up to you whether you're going to go back and run away from it. You're going to have to be like me sometimes. I have one foot in the past, one in the future. Or are you going to forsake all else and put both feet rooted firmly in good soil and not allow this hour and a half on a Sunday morning to be in vain? What are you going to do with the word? Are you going to bring honor to the sower? Or are you going to be the 75%, the three out of four, who the sower never sees a return? When a sower sows, he doesn't sow to get a one for one. He sows to see way more than that which he sowed. Any farmers in the place know what I'm talking about. I sow with an expectation. This Bible is so full of promises for your life. Whether or not you ever see them is not up to God. It's up to you to get it in your heart, to get it in the soil. Amen? Amen. Uh, I'm going to unbutton this jacket. Listen, I'm wrapping up. Each of us, like I said, in this, like I said early, earlier, each of us, there's only four, four types of soil, four types of heart. Jesus explained it, each and every one of them. Most parables, he did not explain what he meant. This one, he was explicit in what he was saying. Go back and read. I know there was a lot that I read. Go back and read it. Each of us falls into one of these four categories. You need to ask yourself this morning, How is my soil? You need to check your soil this morning, even right now. I pray that as I'm speaking, the Holy Spirit begins to convict you. That's the purpose of the word of God. It's why we do what we do. It's not to bring condemnation. It's to bring freedom. It's to bring revelation. 
The heart of the problem is your heart. It's the, is, is, it is the reason that you don't see fruit in your life. Or maybe you used to produce fruit and you don't anymore. Or maybe you never have and you would like to and you just don't know what the, where the gap is, what the issue is, what is my problem. Why do I continually listen to preachers and never see anything manifest in my life? Why do I pray? Why do I read and don't see anything? I see no return. Check your soil. The seed doesn't change. The potential of the seed is always there. It's the condition of the soil that will dictate the fruit that is produced. Is your heart cold and closed off to God? Do you have that hard soil, that compact soil? Things have happened. It's been hard. You're not, you do, you're not even, I mean, the fact that you're even here this morning or watching me online says that you have a chance. Maybe your heart is hard. Maybe your soil is hard. But it doesn't have to stay that way. It doesn't have to stay that way. You can cultivate, begin to cultivate your ground. If that is you and you heard me this morning and you're refused and the Satan's already taken everything that I've said, it doesn't even apply to you, you might as well leave now. I'm not gonna be offended. I already know. I got 25% success rate this morning. <laughs> I don't like those odds. But hey, all it takes is one. All it takes is a mustard seed. There are so many parables of the kingdom is like, the kingdom is like, the kingdom is like, and it starts small. And what happens is it begins to spread. A little bit of yeast works through a whole lot of dough. Okay, okay. Don't despise small beginnings. But you have to be intentional about guarding your soil. It's not the problem of the sower or the seed. It's your soil. Maybe you have the shallow, the shallow soil. Your faith is shallow. You tend to fall away when times get hard. I get it. It's not easy. When what I'm reading versus what I'm seeing in my life don't align. When what I'm praying for, I don't see in my life. Because maybe I put an expiration date on God's promises, right? We don't talk about that. Because he didn't do it in my time, I just give up. Could it be that, this, that your soil, it's, it's there, it's good. It's just not deep yet. So if you spring up quickly, you hear what I'm saying, and you receive it with joy. Don't allow it to stay on that, on that rocky ground. Continue to dig deeper. Because the deeper you dig, the deeper your roots go, the more nourishment they get, and the more they can withstand. So when the sun, the heat does come up in your life, yeah, it might knock you down, but your plant is not going to wither. Or you have other seeds planted in there. <laughs> Other seeds that are competing for space in your soil. If that's you, do like I do and routinely, consistently. Don't ask if you're not ready to hear, but ask the Holy Spirit to begin to reveal to you seeds in your heart that don't belong there. Weeds in my heart that choke my fruitfulness. Because if you ask, he will show them to you. Whether or not you choose to uproot him is up to you. Through his strength, you can do all things. Is it easy? No. Does it happen right away? Sometimes yes. Some, a lot of times no. It takes consistent cultivation and proper boundaries to keep the weeds out of your garden. But if you don't confront them and you allow them to continue to grow, your yard's going to look like my front yard. And that's a mess. Or maybe you heard this message this morning and your heart's been stirred. I pray, Father, right now that you would just stir the hearts of your people. Yes. And you know, you know even right now, or maybe you're watching me online, and you know, you know right now without a shadow of a doubt that you need either a saving work of salvation in your life or you need to repent of sin in your life. Don't let this moment pass you by. Stop waiting until tomorrow. Stop waiting on someone to tell you it's okay to be healed. Stop waiting on somebody to lay hands on you and speak destiny into you. There's a place for all that. Don't get me wrong. But you have to take personal accountability for your soil. It starts with the courage to admit where you're at and to allow the sanctifying work of the Spirit of God to move in your life, to move in your heart. If that's you, when I'm done, there will be people lined up here if you're watching us online and you need it, just text uh, the, the, the prayer to the number on the screen. We want to connect with you guys. 
we want to pray with you guys. We want to help you guys cultivate your soil. Pastor Steve wants to see more fruit in his church. And it's not just the bearing of fruit. We want to see healthy plants. Because if we know if the soil is healthy, then what we're doing is not in vain. Allow God to cultivate your soil, turning it into the fertile ground whereby the potential of his seed, of his word, can be planted in your life. And then you can continually bear fruit. And then it's with that good soil is the one that brings honor to the sower. And isn't that what we all strive to do? It's to honor God. Amen. Everybody in this place, if you're able to, if you want to stand, I'm done. I want to pray over you guys corporately. If you're in this place, listen to me, and you felt a stirring in your spirit, or you're watching us online, don't leave here the same way that you came. Bring your soil up front. Help us to water it. Help us to help you till it up. Let it be good ground. Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus for your word. I thank you for the seed of your word, Father. And I just pray as I sowed your seed today, God, that it would fall in more good soil than it did in bad soil, Father. And I pray right now for anyone whose heart is hard right now, God, that you would give them a, a heart of flesh, Father, that there would be a shift in their spirit even right now in the name of Jesus, that they would feel a conviction that would lead uh, to repentance, that would lead uh, to a sanctifying work of your spirit, that would lead to salvation. I pray, Father, that you draw men unto you, Lord God, that they would come forth, that they would receive the free gift of salvation, not of works, Father, but of you, the precious gift. There's nothing we can do to take it away, God. Just pray, Father, that you would just draw people unto you right now. For those of us who are dealing with crippled soil, God, who are shallow in our commitments, Father, I pray that you would continue one more year to dig around that fig tree, God, that their roots would continue to go deeper and deeper and deeper, even if they don't know it, God. Help them to water their roots, Father. Help them to continue to till the soil of their heart, Lord. That when you come back a year from now, that when you inspect that tree, that there will be fruit in the name of Jesus. And Lord, for those who are dealing with a crowded soil of mixture, Father, I pray that the residue of the world would fall even right now in the name of Jesus. I pray that the anointing that's on the inside of them would rise up in such a way that it breaks the yoke of, of slavery over their life, God. Lord, that the power of the word of God will be manifest in their life, that it's a double-edged sword that it leads to conviction. And God, that you would give them the strength and the courage to uproot the weeds that, and the thorns that are growing alongside your good seed, Father. And Lord, for those with good soil, Lord, I, I thank you for them. And I pray, Father, that they would not, um, that, they, that they would not give in, Lord God, that they would continue even when it's not easy. Even when it doesn't look right, Father, they would continue to, to cultivate their soil, Father, that they would continually ingest your word, that, there's, that, those, that your seed would continually be planted in, that their roots would continually grow deep, Father, and that they would begin to uh, return even 30, some 60, even 100 times more than that which you've sown because of the potential of your seed in their life. And Father, that people see their fruit, Father, that, that they would uh, want to bear fruit themselves. And God, let us not be afraid of being pruned. For we know that when we remain in the vine, we can bear fruit, but that you prune us, Father, that we may bear more fruit. Let us not resist the pruning process. Lord, I just thank you for your word. I pray that it would bring light to darkness, Father. And Lord, I pray a special blessing over everyone under the sound of my voice. God, let this be the best week that they've ever had, God. May their faith grow. May their troubles be small. And I just thank you for meeting them right where they are. We give you glory, honor, and praise for it all. In Jesus' name, amen.